Here the magnet is suspended with no conductive material near it and if I pull it back and swing it, it swings for a long time and if I spin it, it will spin for a long time and will eventually come to rest. Let me let me help it a little bit here. It'll come to rest with one of its poles facing north and the other pole of course facing south like that. Now if I just take and put a sheet of <coughs> probably half inch aluminum underneath it and now I swing it. I'll swing it and let it go. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's what it says. And if I spin it, spin it. It really doesn't spin. I spin it past the attraction point, like so, it will then seek north, mm -hmm. but on a controlled basis. I'm making a movie. Oh, I was wondering. Okay. And if I make it closer, <coughs> the effect is more pronounced. So I'll raise the table. And get it about a sixteenth of an inch from the magnet. And now the magnetic braking effect is much more pronounced. It's not touching the plate. But it's well over damped and very slowly seeks its rest position. By lowering it you can Damp it less. I'll lower it about an inch. No, more than an inch, inch and a half. <coughs> so this will be l much less damped. but still damped. I tried this with tin foil, a thin sheet of tin foil. It doesn't work. It's hardly noticeable. The magnet is more free to swing in this direction because its poles are on the broad side here and the broad side there. And so these are not poles. If I want to stop it, I'll just raise it. And lower it. Swing it and then raise the thing. If I move it, it affects the magnet. It appears to be attracting it, but actually it's So that might be useful. I thought I'd discovered a new physical phenomenon because I had some non-magnetic, what appeared to be non-magnetic material, which was only present, uh, only magnetic when I was around the aluminum. But it turns out that it was weakly mag uh, magnetic. So that's it.